So on July 10, Nintendo finally revealed its worst kept secret in video games, the Nintendo Switch Lite, a $199 cut down version of the original Switch with noticeable emissions, including the removal of HD rumble, the integration of the Joy-Cons into a single unit itself, a small screen 720p, as well as the ability to actually dock the Nintendo Switch itself, all for $199 is aimed to replace the Nintendo 3DS no matter what Nintendo is trying to tell you or what Doug Bowser is telling you about the 3DS. This is a replacement of the 3DS. If we go back to earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal broke the story back in March 25th that two new Switch revisions were coming as early as summer in the United States. And now the Switch Lite is here, releasing in September it's undoubtedly going to sell extremely well, given the full lineup of Nintendo Switch games releasing in the same month. But what happened to the second rumored revision, the Nintendo Switch Pro? Back in April, I made a video speculating what the Switch Pro might be specification wise and performed some benchmarking with an overclocked Switch to emulate what we might expect. I discussed that the system on a chip revision might be the Tegra X2, a natural revision up from the X1 that's found in the OG Nintendo Switch models, and that it would likely have a 25 to 35% performance boost. But new information has recently come to light that might suggest that the Nintendo Switch Pro is further away than we think, and this second rumored Switch revision might just be a silent refresh of the OG Switch models, similar to what we've seen in refreshes during the Xbox 360's life cycle. The Zephyr, Falcon and Jasper models for all intents and purposes were identical, but internally there were changes to the motherboard, die shrink, different cooling and changes to the NAND. But a silent revision of the OG Switch doesn't seem that interesting on face value, but there's more at play here. First of all, it's all but confirmed that the Nintendo Switch Lite and the new OG revision will use the new Tegra X1 Mariko chip. Information about Mariko was first discovered in firmware 5.01 of the Switch itself, as well as reports that Nvidia were integrating Mariko into an up and coming revision of the Nvidia Shield TV. And Mariko is all but confirmed with the recent FCC filing that Nintendo has requested a change of SOC, NAND memory and motherboard. For all intents and purposes, Mariko is here, but where is the Switch Pro? Is it still something that we'll see this year and will this new Switch revision as well as the Switch Lite have any type of performance increases at all? Well that's plenty to consider, so let's first talk about what we know. Mariko is a new generation of Tegra X1 chip that has a die shrink, down to a room at 16 nanometers from the original 20 nanometers of the OG Switch. This means less power is needed to run the Mariko X1 at the same clocks as an OG Switch. For those that might be wondering why a smaller chip needs less power than a larger one, it's simple electronics. It takes more power for electrons to travel further. A smaller chip means less heat is also generated because electrons travel less distances. So most hardware manufacturers are always looking to shrink the die of the chip to be as small as possible. Okay, so let's get the obvious stuff out of the way first. The Nintendo Switch Pro is indeed not this year's second Switch revision, and it isn't something that exists at the moment. It's likely something that we won't see probably until next year. But I do believe the Switch Pro is something that is in some type of prototype phase in Nintendo's R&D lab as we speak. With Microsoft and Sony releasing a new generation of hardware in the holiday season of 2020, Nintendo needs something to bring to compete with that, and the Switch Pro is it. In hindsight, the Tegra X2 was always a long shot to appear in a Switch revision this year, but I do believe that it will drive the Switch Pro or Switch XL, whatever it's called. It's still coming, but likely in 2020. We're also starting to see some games that suggest a different level of performance with Switch revisions. For example, THQ Nordic's new Red Faction Remastered game has options for both high quality and high performance mode. Now, you could easily argue that this is a leftover feature from the PlayStation 4 port, but what business does a feature like this have on a Switch if there wasn't to be newer CPU iterations with increased clock speeds in mind? And speaking of clock speeds, if we take a closer look at Red Faction's high quality mode and by using an overclocking tool, it really smooths out the frame rates, as compared to the quite choppy FPS at stock clocks. 
To me, high quality modes like the one in Red Faction means that more powerful hardware is inevitable. But what about the Switch Lite and this new Switch revision? Will they have stealth performance boosts? Well, it's certainly possible. The Xbox One S came with a slight boost. The new Nintendo 3DS was advertised with improved CPU performance for faster load times. But I would say with the Switch Lite having a smaller screen, that means lower resolution games, for example 540p, would look clearer. So my guess there would be that although Mariko is powering the Switch Lite, it's likely going to run at the same exact stock clocks as an undocked Switch. And the 16 nanometer Tegra X1 is providing additional battery life as advertised. So then that leaves us with this new Switch revision. And this this is the interesting one. Many believe that it will be a silent revision. Doug Bowser himself confirmed no new models are coming out this year. But Mariko has some overhead to boost its clocks on a new Switch revision and retain the same battery life than the current model. And I believe there will be some adjustment in performance. Now, as always on the channel, you guys know I like to do some real world testing to see what performance may look like with the Switch Lite, the new Switch revision, as well as the Nintendo Switch Pro. And the best way to do that is to bust out a modified Switch and run an overclocking tool, which is known as Freeset. Freeset is an overclocking tool that allows us to adjust the CPU, GPU, and memory clocks. In other words, being able to simulate how the Nintendo Switch will run in dock mode, portable mode, as well as other options. To illustrate further, let's consider two scenarios. That the new Nintendo Switch will have, let's say, a 20% CPU increase. In Resident Evil 4, this sees frame rate improvements much more than a stock switch, even with this small increase. It also helps improve Assassin's Creed 3 hit a stable 30 frames per second. My apologies. Another reason to suggest that the CPU may get a boost of around 20% with the new Nintendo Switch revision is loading times. This is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night during the first load of the game. On the bottom is a stock switch, and on top is a switch with a 20% increase in the CPU clock speed. As we can see, the difference can be significant, but this boost could also come from the GPU, which offers better performance in handheld mode. Boosting from a stock 307 MHz to 460 gets us a significant frame rate increase in Resident Evil 4. It also means that games like Xenoblade Chronicles would have increased resolutions in handheld mode. But if there was to be a boost in clocks, doesn't that mean that this new Switch revision would not be a silent update and rather something that Nintendo would announce? Well, it's hard to tell. In the past, CPU updates like this are advertised, but maybe Nintendo, like with the new 3DS, suggests the system offers improved load times and leaves it at that. But even with a small 20% jump in CPU clocks would certainly help with some games smooth out their frame rates, and this would not have much impact on battery life whatsoever. Now, if you want my opinion, it's hard for me to imagine a new Switch revision and no slight increase in performance, especially with games like The Witcher 3 just around the corner. But once again, this is not the Switch Pro, but something that will be slightly better in terms of performance over the OG Switch itself. Now, of course, this is all my speculation and guessing. There is a strong chance that the new Nintendo Switch revision will have nothing new in terms of performance at all. That's quite likely and fits with Doug Bowser's comments of no new Switch announcements this year. There has also been no new discovery to date with current Switch firmware revisions that suggest a new stock clock speed that's any higher than the 1020 MHz of the current CPU. I want to hear your thoughts about what we talked about in this video. Do you think that this information that I'm presenting has any merit whatsoever? I do believe that the new Switch revision will have some type of performance boost, which may or may not be announced as part of the advertising material. If it's truly a quiet Switch revision, it may have a slight increase in CPU clocks. And that's what I'm expecting to see because I do believe that Nintendo are interested in increasing things like loading speeds. We've already seen Nintendo do that with games that have come out in the past, as well as things like these high performance and high quality modes that are starting to crop up in games. So I do think there is a slight CPU performance increase that's coming with the new Switch revision, but otherwise I think everything else is going to be kind of stock as normal 
at least outside, but underneath, obviously we're, we're expecting to see a new motherboard iteration as well as an increase potentially in the NAND memory as well and new DDR4X memory that's also been announced as well. Well guys, I wanna hear your thoughts about my take on the Switch Lite the new Switch revision as well as you know the Switch Pro that I do believe is still coming but obviously not coming this year most likely coming out next year you know to coincide with potentially the new PlayStation 5 and the Xbox One squared or the Xbox One 2 whatever you want to call it we'll see what Microsoft comes out and announces next year for the holiday season that's going to be very interesting but guys I'm going to leave it here for this video thank you so much for watching if you liked it you know what to do give me a thumbs up as always don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video